Welcome back. It's time to talk about volumes, so that means three dimensions. But technically we're going to use sort of two dimensions to kind of describe three dimensions. We'll see about that. Uh, so, some things you have to uh, have to get down before I try and start explaining what these concepts really mean or what the 3D image means, which is going to be difficult on a whiteboard. But I've, I've made a little model, which is terrible, but low-tech is best tech. So here we go. Uh, volumes of solids, and I'm going to find volumes using cross-sections. And there's a typical equation for volume, and that is that the volume equals the integral of the area. And if you think about it, what's happening here is I'm going to have an area of a cross-section, and then dx is actually going to be the width of the cross-section. So you find an area by going, what, length times height? And then width would give you a third dimension. So that's actually volume that we're taking over a certain distance along the x-axis. So we're having a certain number of widths. Relax if that doesn't sound great so far. We'll get to more. All right, anyway, so this a of x is the area of the cross-section, and that d of x is the width of the cross-section. And I'm going to try and get a little more into this volume of solids using cross-sections with an example problem. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to say the base of a shape of a shape is, shall we make it the unit circle? Nah, it's just a circle. Let's make it a bigger circle. This is a circle of radius 3. So the bottom of my shape, the bottom of my shape is going to be a circle of radius 3. Think of a can of something. That bottom has got a, a circular area. I'm going to use that as my base. Uh, it's, not, it's not the area I'm going to use later because the area I use later is of a cross section. This is just the base. And the base of the shape is going to be a circle of radius 3, whatever units you want, doesn't matter. Okay, the next thing I want is I want um, parallel cross sections. Parallel cross sections. And let me grab my notes so that I can write this down correctly and coherently. Uh, perpendicular. Wow, is that how you spell perpendicular? Uh, it's going to be now. Perpendicular. Whoops. <laughs> to the base are squares. Uh, find the volume, period. Find the volume up with whatever that shape is. So, I got the base of a shape, it's a circle. Parallel cross sections perpendicular to the base. What that means is, I got shapes coming up out of the base that are squares. Uh, I didn't actually say it in this problem. A side of the square is going to be the base, on the base. Hmm. Oh well. Let me show you, even though it doesn't say it here, here comes my low-tech model. So here is the base of my shape, right there. It's a circle. That is the base with some sort of radius 3. Um, I'm going to have parallel cross-sections perpendicular to the base, meaning I want them to do this. Ta-da! Cut up Amazon box. It's perfect. <sighs> Since everybody's getting everything in the mail these days, I have a bunch of squares. Look, squares going on into that. And one side of the square is on the base. Should have written that down in the uh, question. Well, sorry. Um, just doing that offhand. And what I've got are uh, millions upon trillions upon billions of them. I've got an infinite number of little squares like this coming up out of the base. And if you notice, uh, as I get towards one side of the circle, the squares get smaller and smaller because the base of the square is just going from one side of the circle to the other. Notice that all of these are parallel. 
<sighs> and as I go towards the middle, I get bigger and bigger and bigger until I get this middle one, which is the biggest they will possibly be because each side is the same length as the diameter of the circle, which in this case is six. So six units of whatever. That square is going to have six units on each side. And it gets smaller and smaller as you get towards the end until it goes away to nothingness, or the other side does exactly the same thing on the other side. So here is sort of a cutaway. Woo! Um, each of these things is a cross section, and they each have this little thickness. And since I'm going to make an infinite number of them, I'm going to have them infinitesimally small. Was that redundant? Oh well. Um, which is dx, which is a, which is a let me write the equation down. Since we have an idea of the question, let's see. Boom, ba boom. I'm actually going to start drawing parts of it so that I can talk about how to find the volume of it. So the first thing I'm going to draw, set that over there, is the base. So here's the base. The base. And I'm going to put the base on the xy axis. So I'm basically base, basically, basically you're going to have this shape coming up out of the board, like this. There's the shape coming up out of the board. So it's going to have these two sharp ridges, and it's going to be kind of flat going over like that, kind of flat going around like that. Use your imagination. There are actually many, many very nice uh, programs online that you can show or, or, or look up, and it'll show this nicely. I'll probably put a couple of those links on my Blackboard site. Anyway, so each one of these has got a radius of, let's see, it's negative 3 to 3, negative 3 to 3. Well, so, of course, that has, has an equation. x squared plus y squared equals 9. Since I put the origin as the center, that's my equation of my base, the way I've written it. Now, I'm going to draw a cross-section. Here's a typical cross-section. And I've got a side, like so, and I know that the area equals a side squared, because that's a square. Side times side. So what I want to do is find the area of this magnificent shape. So base, cross-section. What I want to do is I want to find the area of the cross-section, and then I want to take the integral of that area of the cross-section an infinite number of times, because I'm going to have an infinite number of little cross-sections, which is what the integral from a to b of a of x dx is standing for. a of x is the integral, excuse me, is the area, and then the integral from, in this case, it's going to be negative 3 to 3, a to b of area dx. The dx part gives me the width. dx is the width of each one of those, which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and going away to zero. Here we go. Um, as you noticed, each little square is coming up out of the circle. I'm going to make them go directly up and down because they're basically they're perpendicular to the base. So if I draw them as up and down, then I know that I can find a relationship between this cross section and that base. And here's my relationship. Isn't that distance y? Isn't the distance from here to here a distance y? Because this would be the point x, y. So isn't this length, isn't the length of this piece 2y? And the way I have it constructed, that side goes right there and comes up out of the board. So isn't the side equal to 2y, which means my area equals 4y squared. I know the area. Unfortunately, I wrote this as a to b a of x dx. And I've got an equation in terms of y, but each one of my little cross sections, see right here? has a width of dx. The width is this distance, which is along the x-axis, which has a width of dx. So I need to change that into something with terms of y. 
lo and behold, I have an equation for the base that relates x and y. y squared equals 9 minus x squared. Guess what I'm going to put right there? So this integral is going to go from negative 3 to 3 of, I'm going to put 9 minus x squared in there, 4 times 9 minus x squared dx. That is my volume. And that I think you're perfectly capable of doing. Here, let's do it real quick anyway. Even though I've only got the one little space, I can still do the integral. So I can keep the 4 out if I so desire. So there's the 4. And then I'm going to have 9x minus 1 third x cubed from negative, whoops, negative 3 to 3. And that's how I'm going to find the area of this wild three-dimensional shape as it comes up from a base. And that's what I mean by finding the area, or excuse me, finding the volume of cross sections. Did I say area? I meant the volume of that crazy shape. Uh, that's a technique for finding volumes. Basically, let's see if I can run down. Where's my next example? There it is. Um, I'm going to give you in the equation, in the, in the question, I'll give you a base. I'll give you something that is perpendicular, coming up perpendicular to that base. And generally, you'll draw it so that uh, the x is right, at right angles to the x-axis, unless, of course, the equation tells you otherwise. Because, you know, I, I could have done this sideways. I could have done this in terms of, not in terms of x, but in terms of y. I could have done this in terms of y. I should do a problem in terms of y. All right. So you find a base. That base is going to have some sort of an equation relating x and y. Then you find the cross section. Find the area of the cross section and relate it to the base using the x and y. Then you put that into your volume equals area, or the integral of the area from a to b of dx or from a to b of dy. All right, let's try another. So suppose I give you something more interesting. Suppose uh, the base is y equals the square root of, what did I use, 16? Something nice and simple like 16, I did. 16 minus x squared. There we go. Um, then I'm going to say perpendicular cross-sections uh, are going to be what shape did I use? Ooh, isosceles right triangles are isosceles right, let's make this smaller, right triangles. Uh, then, um, with, I should say, I didn't say this last time about the sides, but how about this? With hypotenuse on the base. So I should make that a capital P. At least that's a sentence. And that's probably a sentence if I do that. Okay, so I'm saying the base is this. And then I'm saying I have perpendicular cross-sections that are isosceles right triangles coming up out of the base. So instead of having this lovely circle with squares coming up out of it, I'm going to have that shape, which is actually a semicircle. So out of a semicircle, I will have triangles coming up out of it. Okay, so let me look at that base. I always want a nice picture of the base so I can get that equation. Uh, this is going to go up to 4 and over to 4 and back to negative 4. That's going to be the base. There's my equation of the base. Y, X. And then I'm going to have triangles. Isosceles right triangles. This right here is the base of the triangle, and it's going to be... I'm going to put it right there. So the triangle's coming up out of the board like this, and the way I drew it, it's going to have a thickness of dx. 
Okay, that means I'm going to need a, an area with respect to x. But how do I find the area of one of those? Well, that's not too bad. Let's see. Uh, area equals one half base times height. This is my base. That's my height. Actually, this is a, a right triangle, isn't it? So why don't I just do side side? Can't I just do that? Yes, of course I can. Or one half uh, side squared. If those are my sides and this is my base, then I could do either one of those formula if I wanted to. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see, if I go back to this, then I know that the bottom part right here is this. So I know that actually B equals Y. Well, that's going to be nice. So I'm going to say A, one half B is Y. And if you think about it, if I draw the height, which is there, then these are, these are also, now these, these, are, this, this, these are 45 degree angles, aren't they? So those are going to be 45 degree angles also. So these are now, <laughs> the same sort of triangle. They're isosceles triangles. This H is the same as half of the base. Okay, so if it's half of the base, that means one half Y. So the area equals one fourth Y squared. Fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, I need it in terms of X. Fortunately, I have an equation for the base which is where I go back to my area and put things in the form that I want. So this is going to be 1 fourth times uh, 16 minus x squared. So I drew a little picture of the base that I knew what I was looking at. I drew a little picture of my cross section that's coming up out of the base. So I knew what that was looking like. I found an area of it. Very simple. It's just 1 half base times height or 1 half. Uh, side squared, I ended up using the top one and then related that to this picture because this y value is the same as the base because that's where the base is. So that y value, that base is this y, which is also that. So that's what I put in there, base is y. And because this is an isosceles right triangle and I had a right angle up there, those had to be 45 degree angles. So when I drew the base, I got two more 45 degree angles and I knew that these two sides were the same. So H have to, had to be half of the base, which is half a Y, which gives me Y squared, which means I can go up here, change it to X because, let's see, the, not, the mini board has to be erased sometimes. So memorize everything I just did. And I can get the volume equals the integral of that 1 fourth 16 minus x squared dx from, uh, in this case, negative 4 to 4. Simple enough. Well, actually, I can make it uh, even easier to do. Watch this. What if I said um, 2 integral from 0 to 4, 1 fourth, 16 minus x squared, dx. Well, well, what did I do? How did that negative 4 become a 0 in that lower boundary, and where'd that 2 come from? Well, the idea is nice and simple. See this shape? It's perfectly symmetric upon the y-axis. If I get a volume on the right side, it will equal the volume on the left side. So what if I just went from zero to four, so I get the volume on the right side, and just multiply it by two. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, that's simple. When I take the integral, I'll be substituting in a four and a zero. Man, I love to multiply by zero. Up here, I'd be substituting a four and a negative four. Not terribly difficult, but doesn't that zero make that second part really a lot easier? So the integral might be half as difficult. That's okay, you don't have to. This first one is correct, and this second one is correct. So there's two examples, and my lovely low-tech um, volume picture. Get that on the screen one more time. 
Ta-da! Oh, don't throw it around. There we go. Low-tech volume model, basin squares. So to go backwards, what is my technique? Um, just to sum up, uh, let's see. Well, the volume of a solid is the integral from A to B of the area over X in the two cases that I've shown you. It could be over Y. So the first thing you do is, or I do is, I sketch a, a, a base and I think about the equation of that base. Then I sketch the cross section and I need uh, the area of that cross section. And then I need to relate that area. So instead of using B and H, which I used, or, or S, I need to relate it to the X's and Y's in this equation, which I do because some part of this shape, this cross section will be on that um, base so that it can come straight up out of that base, out of the board. Then I just plug it into my volume formula. Take that volume, do that integral, off you go. Magnificent. I <sighs> hope that was okay. If not, I'm sure you'll tell me. Bye-bye.